is going on guys it's yoji let me start this video off by saying hades is a fantastic game if you haven't heard about it by now and if you enjoy action games and a great story with pristine presentation a banger soundtrack <laughs> Hades could easily be the game to bridge you the gap towards the next Path of Exile expansion, or maybe Cyberpunk 2077 if you are waiting for that. And I would even say, if you normally are not too keen on the roguelike genre, Hades might still be very much worth checking out, as this game solves a lot of issues people tend to have with roguelikes, be it feeling bad about dying and starting over, losing runs to bad RNG, the generally high difficulty level overwhelming players with mechanics early on, and the repetition inherent in the genre's nature even when completing successful runs. After all, roguelikes are repetitive games, about doing something better and a bit different each time, and no video game I have played does that part better than Hades. Supergiant games nailed the death and restart, and even the completed run and restart part so much that I've caught myself a few times being happy that I died, so I get to experience more of the game's fantastic dialogue in the hub area that is called the House of Hades. To give you a very short summary of the story, for those unfamiliar, you play Zacharias, the son of Hades, and you have a difficult relationship with your dad, so you try to escape the underworld, which Hades tries to prevent by sending all sorts of monsters, servants of hell, mythical creatures, passed away heroes of legend, and eventually even tries to stop you by himself. As you play, you uncover more about Zagreus and Hades' story and relationship, but there are also side characters which all have their very distinct personalities, connections with other figures you meet around the underworld, who all have their very own intricacies, relationships and stories in this world. Discovering the rich lore and story in this game was actually my main motivator to keep replaying Hades. The writing is on point in every aspect. My favorite part about the whole world and story building concept of Hades is how every game mechanic is actually part of the lore, the story and the world itself. All the upgrade systems have a source or creator among the game's NPCs and changes in each system such as upgrades as well as any part of your gameplay are always acknowledged by several side comments from different characters you meet, be it the gods of Olympus with their little blurbs when granting you boons throughout your journey or the residents of the House of Hades of course. This acknowledgement of what happens within the gameplay side of the game really makes the world of Hades feel consistent, coherent and non-gamey, allowing gameplay and story work together so harmoniously, it's amazing. Admittedly, we have come to expect this from Supergiant Games. Expressing story throughout gameplay seems to be kind of their thing, considering how well they did it with their previous titles. And for me, Hades probably tops this list. And one of the main reasons this achievement can be accomplished is by the sheer amount of voice lines this game offers. I have not encountered a single repeating or doubling voice line throughout all my playthroughs of Hades. Even when dying to the same boss encounter multiple times in a row, there seems to be a huge variety in voice lines for the same occasions. So it never challenges your suspension of disbelief by people just saying the same thing over and over. This really made me realize how much I hate that happening in games, and I was so happy that Hades doesn't do that. Plus all the story is brought to you in a very slow paced manner, no large exposition dumps, and god, I hate exposition dumps. One of my biggest pet peeves in video game writing. And instead, the game trickles lore to you and leaves you yearning for more lore, story bits and dialogue, while at the same time offering amazing gameplay in between. To complete the main storyline, after which by the way there's still tons of side stories and little details to unravel, takes you 9 successful clears of the game, which means 9 successful escapes from hell. Which might sound like a lot, especially when I say that it took me over 20 tries to get my first successful run, but it really didn't feel that way. By now I've completed the game many times and on various difficulty levels, using multiple aspects of all the game's different weapons, playing builds focusing on various parts of Zagreus' moveset, interesting boon combinations and with all this variety I had not a single run that felt like I lost it to bad luck. Bad luck, restart spamming runs for good initial RNG and other issues connected to the procedural generation of content that is a core feature of this genre are not present in Hades, or at least not nearly as common as in most similar games. The developers managed to cull bad RNG runs without sacrificing variety at all, and I believe this achievement was possible with a combination of two elements. 
player control and meaningful choice. Player control is pretty simple to implement, but it's hard to get just right. Give the players more control over their items, skills, overall builds, and you simply reduce RNG, right? Well, yes, but you have to be careful not to lose out on replayability by making each run too similar. While I'm not saying Hades is doing this perfectly, there's still a lot here in this game that I believe a ton of future games relying on randomly generated content will borrow from in the coming years, and for good reason. You start each run with choosing a weapon. You choose from a sword, a spear, a bow, a shield, punchy fists, or an assault rifle. Yeah, an assault rifle. Each weapon has their own moveset as well as up to three different aspects, which alter some of the functionalities of the weapon or even give you a slightly different moveset. By being able to freely choose which weapon you use each run, you get to direct the core aspects of your playstyle. But what stops the player from sticking to one weapon every single time? Nothing, but there are incentives to trying out different weapons such as a rotating currency gain buff that is granted by one of the weapons each run, randomly. Boss drops are also gated by completing every boss with every weapon for each difficulty level. So if you do not yet want to up the difficulty to earn more and more rewards, you have to pick a different weapon instead. But if you just want to get really good at one weapon, you can just up the difficulty choosing the same weapon each time and still earn rewards. Lastly, there are also some side story elements hidden behind completing certain encounters with specific weapon aspects. Oh, it also really helps that each individual weapon is a crap ton of fun to play with and all weapons are viable to complete the game with and feel like a good choice to make. Another part of player control lies within how the reward and boon system works. After completing one room, you will often have to pick between one to three rooms to go to next by knowing not the enemies inside, but the reward type of the upcoming room, be it gold, maximum life, darkness, or a godly boon, for example. This is all pretty standard stuff for roguelikes but there are a few additional layers of choice here. At the core of every Hades build lies the boon system. Each time a god grants you a boon, you get to choose out of three different options. These layer choices allow you to counteract a lot of bad RNG. But Supergiant Games decided to go one step further by helping RNG's hand in the background as well. While playing through Hades, it quickly became obvious to me that choosing one of the gods, for example Zeus, once in a run, will make it in turn more and more likely to encounter that god again and again throughout your run. This allows you to focus several boons around that god's special mechanics and buffs. To stick with Zeus here as an example, as you'd expect from him, the head honcho of Olympus grants you a lot of boons that will allow you to cause lightning bolts striking enemies. Grabbing more and more Zeus boons will eventually add lightning bolts to a lot of your skills and eventually will also grant your lightning bolts extra effects, allowing them to have, for example, increased area of effect, deal more damage, or even cause special status effects. But that doesn't mean focusing on a single god is even always the best option. And this brings me to the part where Hades offers actual meaningful choice when creating your build, and that is something not many games these days achieve nearly as well. Meaningful choice is achieved by having nearly all choices be good, viable, potentially gameplay altering and the most important part, very fun to use. There are very few bad choices or noob traps in this game, if any at all. Very rarely you will find yourself with an obvious right or wrong choice, especially early in a run. Rather you will find yourself for example deciding on a specific playstyle as you progress through the rooms and pick up your rewards. Or you will be patching up your weaknesses. I was less worried about whether or not I will be able to make a viable build and more curious about finding out new and fun ways to cover for single target damage, trash mob clearing, as well as improving defenses and mobility to be able to dodge and survive upcoming encounters. To come back to the example of whether or not focusing on a single god or spreading boons between several of Olympus's inhabitants is the way to go, I have to say both are good strategies. Focusing on buffing up one single mechanic, such as Zeus's lightning bolts, Poseidon's knockbacks or Ares' blade storms can be great, but often you will get a more well-rounded build by at least dabbling in some other mechanics and god's boons. Plus, there are fantastic so-called duo boons to be discovered when focusing on at least two different gods, which will allow you to combine their powers to create often very powerful and unique effects and synergies, not rarely enabling new fun playstyles you've not encountered in this game before. However, even with all this variety, Supergiant managed to somehow make each mechanic and each gameplay altering buff, like for example the very powerful Daedalus' hammer effects, to be not only handcrafted for each weapon choices, they also all feel like they've been very thoroughly tested, changed and polished 
with the goal of making every single one of them as fun and uniquely different to play as possible. And there is close to zero filler in there, which to me is an astounding achievement. But if all choices are great, doesn't that mean that it matters little which outcome you choose? Interestingly, no. Just randomly picking boons and rewards will likely leave you with a pretty bad character a lot of the time. But choices are, as mentioned, rarely very clear-cut and more about creating synergies and adjusting to your own personal preferences and playstyle. You can definitely screw up a run with bad choices, but as you learn more and more how the boons interact, you will learn how to pick good synergies. And very rarely RNG will just completely ruin a run. Unless maybe you went all in on a specific strategy too early for example, and banked on getting a very specific upgrade that never shows up. But I feel like this is on the player then. And if you keep an open mind and diversify your options early, it's harder to get completely screwed over later on, especially on the lower to mid-tier difficulties. And speaking of difficulty, I always found roguelikes, and especially roguelites, so roguelike games with some form of persistent permanent upgrade system, or as is often the case, many different upgrade systems, struggle to find a difficulty curve that makes sense. And Hades is no exception here, in my opinion. While it does not make the also very common mistake of overwhelming the player with too many choices and systems early on, it still has the usual odd difficulty curve of most roguelite games. While the gradual introduction of game mechanics, alongside the as mentioned deliberately slow paced reveals of story details, also have their own pros and cons, let me preface this last section of this video by saying that in this case, I think I prefer the game forcing its slower pace on me, instead of allowing me to take on the game on my own pace. Too often have roguelike games just dumped all the deep and complicated game mechanics on me within an hour of gameplay, leaving me confused and overwhelmed and thus hampering the learning curve by creating too much variety between runs too early. Crown Trick is a recent example of a roguelite that for me fell into that category. Every single run was so vastly different early on, I couldn't even get into the groove of the game. But I want to make clear that I can definitely see why someone would be annoyed by how much Hades tries to slow down the overall experience. And one big part of that is how very powerful the permanent passive upgrades are. You can unlock with currency in between runs. From significant damage bonuses, extra hit points and basically mandatory upgrades such as an extra dash or even up to 4 extra lives, there are very few interesting choices to make here. And a lot more obviously correct ones which seems rather odd after looking at the boon system earlier, which nails this aspect. With how powerful these buffs are, you will end up with a significantly more powerful character the more you play. This leads to two strange effects on gameplay that many roguelites share and that I am not a fan of. The first one ties into the pacing of the game being forced on you as I mentioned before. Early on your character is so weak that getting a successful run on your first few attempts is extremely unlikely. And not only because you are new to this game. Only once you get a few more upgrades, you will find that you actually stand a chance against the later encounters. So again, the game imposes its pacing on you, rather than allowing you to progress at your own pace. Secondly, it leads to a weird phenomenon present in any roguelite game with upgrades that affect player power. The game gets easier as you progress, which is the opposite of how games normally are structured. Any action game, platformer, strategy game, campaign or racing game start out easy and become more difficult gradually while peaking in some final showdown or boss fight. Because as you play more, you get better at the game. So it makes sense for any game to become gradually harder in sync with the player getting better at the game too. But not roguelites, beating the game becomes easier and easier as you upgrade your stats. I always found this super weird because of course as you play more your skill as a player improves and it becomes very hard for me to tell whether or not I succeed or fail because of my skill or because of my character level and stats. As mentioned Hades does not really offer any solutions or new approaches in this specific regard and as an upside of this weird difficulty curve you can definitely mention that even if you are not an amazing player, you can experience everything Hades has to offer eventually. And I think that's the reason why Supergiant Games chose to go with this model and such very powerful character upgrades. They want you to experience the storyline. And for those of you who want a challenge, there are plenty of options to increase the difficulty of the game, which become available either by completing your first successful run or by choosing Hell Mode when creating your save. And the difficulty options Hades presents are not only again driven by player choice, allowing you to customize your experience, it also offers plenty of super fun and interesting options, such as changing boss fights, limiting boon choices or adding a timer. So it is not just your run-of-the-mill numerical buffs to enemies. Although there's plenty of that too, 
if that's what you are into. However, I encountered a weird difficulty dip after getting the hang of the game and finally completing my first run after many tries. Because then the game somehow clicked for me and I completed every single run on the standard difficulty with each weapon without any problems whatsoever. And even the first five heat levels of added difficulty did not change that one single bit. If you then add that you want to complete every difficulty level with each weapon type for the respective bounties, it felt a bit grindy to me to do all these runs that were not very challenging anymore. Because I didn't want to skip difficulties, because that meant skipping rewards, right? And one last nitpick, upping the difficulty when aiming for 9 successful runs to see all of the main story seems a bit odd, like artificially hampering your chances at success since you don't have to up the difficulty at all to progress the storyline. But all the things I mentioned as negative sides of the game are just very very small issues and nitpicks. And some things I mentioned are not even criticism, it's just my preference being different from what the developer chose to do and almost every single time I can see why they made the choices the way they did. Because the game makes for an overall fantastic experience. With all this, I think Hades is currently my favorite roguelite on the market and I give my full recommendation to buy and play this game right now if you feel any urge at all to try it out. At the price point of less than half of a full price title, I don't see how any cent could be wasted here. And if that is not enough to convince you yet, there's fishing in this game. Yup, actual fishing. Thank you to all my patrons, as always, for amazing support. I'm Yoji, and I will see you soon.